Hey guys, Soccer from Socky Ticket. In today's video, we are going to be talking about some of the brand new and top features of Android 11. Now, as you know, Android 11 is now available on a lot of Pixel devices. So let's dive in and discover what is new. So first, I'm going to go into my settings. All right, I'm going to go all the way down, go into my About Phone, uh, tap on Android 11 right here. And as you can see, that's what we are running. And if I tap on this a couple times, it brings up the new Android 11 icon and you can do some things with it as usual. Okay, so that's great. So now, the very first thing that I wanna talk about is the new music controls that are gonna be in the actual notification shade. So let me go ahead and launch the music player and I'm gonna play a music. I have muted the volume, so when you tap on play, okay, now, uh, when you pull this down, you'll notice that we have a music player on the top right over here. I can pause and play music go to the previous track or the next track. By the way, if I pull this down, it still stays in the actual notification shade. On the top, we have our quick toggles that I can scroll through just like this. Now, in this little player that's in the shade, you can also tap on this option here, and you can switch the speakers from your phone speaker to any other Bluetooth speaker that you want that is connected to your phone, okay? So it is nice and useful on the top right here. So that's number one. Also, when I press and hold on the screen, if I go to my styles, uh, let's go to my style right over here. Let's say I wanna create a custom style, okay? Now, as I create my styles, let's pick a font, uh, let's pick an icon pack, and then let's pick a color, let's go for this color. Uh, when it comes to the shapes of the icons, I do have some new options. So look at all these new shapes that I can give my icons. There's th three new shapes. I'm not sure exactly which ones are new, but this one seems to be new. This one seems to be new. And then you have all these existing options from the from the previous, mo uh, previous version. But we do have three new custom shapes in here if you are customizing the style uh, of your smartphone. Two, we now have a screen recording feature on the quick toggles. Okay, so if I swipe over, it's gonna be right here. If I tap on it, it's gonna ask you, do you want to record audio? You can say yes, and then you can pick where do you wanna record the audio from? Do you want the microphone, the device audio, or do you wanna use a device audio and a microphone? And also, uh, do you want to show the touches on the screen? So let's enable that, okay? Let's disable the device audio or the record audio option, and tap on start, and it starts three, two, one, and now it starts to record. Now, as I swipe this back and forth, it is recording the screen. When I'm done with it, I pull this down, and there's the option in the panel, and I tap to stop, and then that option gets saved into my photos or gallery. It's right over here. If I tap on it, it's gonna play that, and you'll notice that we have the touch on the screen. As I touch the screen, it records where I touch the screen and gives you an option that way. So that's the brand new recording option, which is fantastic. Now, the other thing that I'm really loving is if I am doing picture in picture, let's launch the YouTube application. I'm gonna play one video right here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go home, okay? And the picture in picture appears right here. Now what I can do is I can tap the edges, not tap, but grab and hold and resize that window, make it a little bit larger. In the past, I think it was a little bit too small. Now it's much better that you can resize it a little bit better. So as you do other stuff, you can see more of the actual video. And of course, PIP works with other applications as well. The next thing is when you press and hold the power button right here, you now get a brand new menu. On the top, you got the emergency option, the power off and the restart. Over here, you have the Google Pay that you can activate. At the bottom, you've got your home controls for your smart product. So these, in my case, are all lights. I can tap over here. I can add more controls and edit controls. If I tap on edit, I can remove them by unchecking them if I don't want them, okay? Or I can tap over add. It's gonna take me to the adding screen. And from there, I can add even more controls uh, to control my actual home smart items. Now with the power menu, there's one more thing you can do. Now if I go into my settings, okay, and if I go into my display, and if I go into my, let's see, lock screen, you do have the option to show a lockdown option. So if I enable this, 
Now, when I press and hold the power button, we also get a lockdown option. Now, when you do a lockdown, it is gonna lock the phone, and the only way you can unlock the phone is if you put in your password. It's gonna disable uh, biometrics and every other way to unlock your phone. You're gonna have to put your password. So it's, it's locked down. I cannot use Face ID. I have to put my PIN number in, which is great if you're going to sleep so somebody doesn't sneakily try to uh, unlock the phone uh, using your face. They have to put the password in, which is very hard to guess. So we have that new lockdown option. Now, one more thing, if I bring up the multitasking pane, at the bottom, we have two new buttons. We have the screenshot button. So if I tap on this, it takes a screenshot of the window, okay? It doesn't, it takes the screenshot of this entire window. It does not take the screenshot of the area around it. So if I were to go over here, uh, let's just uh, come right here. Okay, if I tap on screenshot, it saves this window right here. And as you can see, we have a new little interface at the bottom uh, to edit that screenshot. Also, if I pull it up, you have the select option. So I can tap on select, and this allows me to select any text on the screen. So the phone intelligently analyzes all the text, and I can tap on the portion, and I can copy that portion uh, to use it for whatever reason, okay? So we have select and screenshot. And finally, if I go all the way over, I have the clear all option right here. Instead of having to manually uh, kill each window, I can just swipe all the way to the right, tap on clear all, and it's all gone. Fantastic. Another big change is in the notifications shade. So when I pull this down, you'll notice that everything is now compartmentalized, so they're broken down into their own categories. So I have this as my silent notifications from the YouTube Studio application. Uh, these are my regular notifications. But if somebody sends me a text message or a messenger message or a WhatsApp message, they will be classified in their own little window under conversations. So at a glance, you can look at your conversations instead of having all your notifications mixed with each other, okay? And if I swipe over, I can tap on settings and I have a new way to change uh, the way the notifications are delivered. I can go to default for the for this particular application or I can have them silent. So if I get a lot of notifications from certain applications, I can just make it silent so the phone doesn't beep every five seconds. But anything important, you can keep it in the um, standard notification. So again, if I swipe over, tap, you can turn off notifications or whatever. Uh, some applications give you more options, such as this one, as you can see, okay? So that's all new, compartmentalized, categorized notifications. All right, now let's move on to the next tactic. Now, if you go to your settings, okay, and if you go into your notifications, apps and notifications, when you go into your notifications right here, you are able to access all your notification history, even the ones that you've cleared out. And this is a nice way to see what has happened on your screen uh, all day long. Maybe you missed something important. You just want to browse through and see what has happened. Last 24 hours, all these notifications. Again, they're compartmentalized. So in the last 24 hours, I got 23 notifications from Google Play Music. I can tap it. It's going to expand it, give me more details. So it's all nice and cool. And of course, if you don't want it, you can turn that off. So that's great. And then we also have the bubbles option. So if I tap on this one right here, I am able to have uh, applications like messages, messenger, WhatsApp to give me bubbled notifications. So when somebody sends me a text message, I get a little bubble just like that. I can tap on it, okay, as you can see in that preview and see all my conversations for that specific application. I can disable it if you don't want bubbles, but if you want message, Facebook Messenger like bubbles for all your chatting applications, this is the way to go. So that's another new tactic. You also have some updates to your privacy. So if I go into my privacy, I can go to my permission manager, okay? Here, it tells me what each application on my phone has access to. So for example, for body sensors, if I tap it, no phone, I mean, no application has access to the body sensors built in to the phone. But if I go to my camera, it looks like we have five applications that have given access to the camera, okay? Here's the ones that have denied access, that I've denied or automatically denied. 
Here's the ones that I did give access. And of course, I can tap on any one of these and change it. Ask for access every time or deny if you don't want that application to have access to your camera, your contacts, your files, location, microphone, or whatever. So you can fully customize your privacy from the permission manager per application. That's great. Now we do have an option that is added to the dark mode. If I go to my display and if I go into my dark theme, I can turn these on, but I can also have a schedule. So I can turn on at a custom time or I can turn on uh, from sunset to sunrise. So these are new options, uh, not maybe for a lot of other phones, but for Android 11, these are built in to the phone now, okay? Another great thing is, let's say I'm in an application, any application, let's go over here and I wanna share something. When I tap on share, what I can now do is I can pin frequently used sharing applications to the top in this window. All I do is press and hold and pin save to drive in this option. And as you can see, it has been pinned to the top. I can do the same thing with a, with a Gmail. For example, I can pin that Gmail. So I know that I use this all the time. I can pin them all the way to the top. That is fantastic, all right? So those are basically some of the top new features in Android 11 for your Pixel smartphone. Uh, I think most of the Pixel smartphones are getting Android 11, even the budget models. Now, if you do have any questions, comments, or concerns, Drop them down below and let me know. For now, guys, have a fantastic day.